Hello, my name is Brian Breton. This is my presentation on empathy from a Christian worldview. Empathy from a Christian worldview. Empathy is misunderstood on so many levels and is misused and misconstrued as a tool instead of an ability. Salovitz and Perry wrote, the essence of empathy is the ability to stand in another's shoes to feel what is like there and to care about making it better if it hurts. Being empathetic requires that person actually tries to help another and puts forth the effort instead of just feeling obligated. Empathy in the Bible. The Bible has much to teach about character and morals, especially how to relate and love our fellow man. While imprisoned in Rome, Paul wrote the book of Romans. Even while he was being held against his will, he was still able to write the word of God with great empathy. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Haughty is another word for arrogant. We all know how hard it is to associate arrogant people with arrogant people. Arrogance is a character flaw that can be corrected over time. And the lowly are people who are humble and simple. There is much to learn from humble, simple people. Wisdom is often gained by spending time with the lowly. I found. Empathy in the Bible. In the book of Matthew, Jesus spoke about the great empathy that he had for his fellow man. Seeing the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. That's Matthew 9.36. Salvas and Perry wrote, when you empathize with someone, you try to see and feel the world from his or her perspective. Your primary feelings are more related to the other person's situation than your own. Jesus' primary focus was always on man and not himself. <clears throat> Joseph and his brothers. In the book of Genesis, Joseph was sold into slavery by his envious brothers. Jacob eventually finds himself in the good graces of the Pharaoh of Egypt, where he holds authority and power. Driven by famine and shortage of grain, his brothers found themselves at the feet of Joseph, begging for food. The brothers did not know that it was their brother Joseph in which they begged. Then he turned away from them and wept. But, he, but when he returned to them and spoke to them, he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, but also to return every man's money in his sack and to give them provisions for the journey. And that is what was done for them. That's Genesis 42, 24 to 25. Joseph and his brothers continued. The story of Joseph has always held a special place in my heart. I too have many brothers who throughout my life have been vile and cruel to me. I fall into line as number three out of four brothers. Joseph's decision to provide for his brothers was solely an empathetic event. This kind of empathy is not just born of the heart of man. It is originated from the love of Christ and from his love for us, through us, and to our brothers. I have only learned to truly forgive and empathize with my brothers just as Joseph did with his own. Joseph and I were both given the ability to see our brothers through a lens of forgiveness and love, with, and with great love, empathy is born. My faith and empathy. Before my transition into Christ, a Christ-centered life, I only truly connected with others because I wanted something from them. I never really connected with anyone from the heart. Through faith and a Christ-centered lens, I have not only learned, but I have felt and seen the transformation that allows me to automatically embrace others in a way that does not reap earthly reward, but offers the bountiful riches of true friendships. Um, just this week, I found myself on my knees while holding one of my clients as they had a full-blown seizure. All I could do was hold them and ride it out with them. We just wrote it out together. That was one of the most craziest empathetic events that I've ever embraced in my life. It was truly life-changing. Empathy in neuroscience. 
The human brain in, in association with empathy is a great mystery that is still under enormous amount of focus in the fields of science and psychology. Dikthi and Reitz wrote, There is considerable evidence that feeling distress at witnessing another person in distress can pr produce motivation to help that person. It is only evident that when given the chance to move your feet and to become motivated to help someone in distress, you must make that decision, and that decision depends on your moral character. Conclusion. Empathy is not just a concept based on neuroscience. Empathy is a gift. It is a choice, a motivation to embrace others out of unbiased love and compassion. God said, I am giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. John 13, 34 through 35. Thank you for listening to my presentation on empathy from a Christian worldview.